you are now. What would you like to take with you? What, are you, what, did, the, what did it say about the game the other day? Well, probably exactly like it looked, you know. Um, we were running some stunts. We weren't handling the edge. We weren't getting out to turn the ball back, so we lost the edge a lot. Tackling wasn't very good. Um, but we emphasized that we got to do something different to so we can wrap, but we're not wrapping up well. Uh, certainly uh, couldn't get off the field with their rushing attack. They, you know, out physical just there offensively. Um, not a whole lot in there. I, I, you know, uh, of good things to say as far as the blocking, um, uh, breaking tackles, um, protecting the quarterback in all phases, getting open. Uh, basically, I guess, Tom, probably just about what it looked like during the game. Um, I thought Jacoby uh, came in and got, gave us a spark, though, you know, and, and uh, played extremely hard, even on the last throw. I thought it was on a dime. Uh, we just didn't catch it. But, I mean, I thought he did a really good job there. Special teams, um, obviously, we've got to cover better. That's twice that we've given up punts for touchdowns. You know, kicked it out of the zone. But at the same time, we've got to get a guy on the ground. And we had opportunities, too. Again, we missed tackles on that one as well, too. So probably about what uh, you thought uh, from or what I thought from watching the watching the game. You said up here a few weeks ago that it was it was your butt on the line. I wonder if these next two games it feels like you're coaching for next year. Uh, well, you're always trying to win, you know. So um, it, honestly, it doesn't feel a whole lot different than what it does every week. We want to win um, and coach for our players to be. Um, the best they possibly can be. And, you know, in, in coaching, I think a lot of times you get um, concerned when you you felt like you've had a really good practice week and it doesn't go well on a Saturday. So we went back and tried to figure out if we can change something up. Uh, obviously, it was the same thing we did against Florida format-wise. Um, but no, I mean we, we we're trying to win games and and uh, trying to do the best we can to put put the kids in the best spot to uh, have success. Coach, I don't know if you felt like the players' energy was was right for the Auburn game, but with FIU coming to town, how do you make sure that they're right and mentally focused when it's not you know a logo team as they say? Well. We have to be right because, I mean, I, I would think that we would really want to play after what happened Saturday. Uh, of course, you can go back another Saturday and say you'd really want to play from what happened at Florida as well. Um, but, uh, you know, we got embarrassed Saturday, so I, I, th I like our kids in the locker room. Uh, I would be shocked if we don't come out ready to play. Uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll practice well, and, and we, we've got accountability uh, for them, for us, for me. Um, but um, uh, the past has said that we haven't played real well against teams uh, like this. And so there is obviously a concern there. And we've got to try to uh, coach the way out of that during the week. Obviously, the you know, the fans came out last game. I think they had 72,000 yeah. plus. Um, just your message to them to, uh, you know, it's been a couple – disappointing couple of last home games, obviously. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, we're thankful for coming out and and supporting us. And obviously, uh, we're disappointed we didn't have uh, uh, even a good showing uh, for them on Saturday. Uh, but um, we believe that we can get this thing turned around, and uh, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, Sam and McIntyre, I mean, people usually know him from, from uh, Colorado, but he's got a bit of an SEC background. His dad was an SEC coach. Do you know him at all? And just kind of what I do you think I, of him? I, I know him because he's on the AFCA Board of Trustees with me. And so uh, I know him there. I know some people who work with him at Colorado. Um, really energetic guy, great guy. Um, I think he was a GA at Georgia maybe at some, some point in his time. Um, but he's doing a really good job there. The kids play extremely hard, 
and uh, he's got a he's got a nice athletic quarterback and and some skilled players and defensively they run and they'll hit you. So uh, he's doing a really good job there uh, at FIU. There's been two SEC coaches fired. Here. I think it's been about 24 hours, and that probably just increases the noise about what you know. It's a tough year here. Do you? How do you deal with that? Do you block? Do you ignore it? Do you address it with the team? I just wonder how, how you. Yeah, it's a good question. That. You know, I think it's hard. You know, obviously, to block out all noise. You know what I mean? We're, we're, we've got a job to do, and uh, that is to get prepared each and every week. And um, but you know, Jamie and I, when we got here, we we were planning on coaching here until. Uh, whatever that date was uh, that we were going to go down to hot springs and call it a day. I'm not close to that year right now. And the plan is to get this program back to where it deserves to be and stay here as long as, as we possibly can. And, uh, so it's hard. It's obviously, that was a really good question by the way, but to, um, block out noise, you know, it's more like for the kids, for the recruits, you know, once it starts, a lot of negative stuff it's 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 about recruiting and I know what's going on Hunter Yurichek knows what's going on but really nobody else really it's opinion they don't really know what's going on but it affects our recruits so we spent a lot of time yesterday with that as well but my job is to get ready for FIU uh, I'm not worried about my job security at all uh, and I think I'm the guy for for the university and I want to stay here for a long time Coach, kind of going off of uh, saying it affects the recruits, you know, around the country, starting to see some players hit the transfer portal. You know, how difficult is it to, during this time period, to just keep your guys from entering the transfer portal? Well, so far it hadn't been difficult at all. Uh, obviously, we talk to our kids on a daily basis, and and uh, I know the defensive staff yesterday talked to every kid on the team. Uh also with the recruits because of all the noise that was going on. Um, but uh, I don't know why you'd leave the University of Arkansas. We treat our kids like they're supposed to be treated. We expect them to get an education. Um, and it's a great place to live and a great place to get get a degree. I wouldn't have any idea why they'd want to leave. And then those conversations with the recruits yesterday, just overall, how did you feel like all that went? I think it went well. You know, I haven't heard anything different. You know, um, uh, we can't do anything about what people write. I just wish they would write truth. You know, but we can't. We can't. We can't deal. Uh, not opinion. What you know, if you're saying a man's fired, then he should be fired. Uh, um, so we can't deal with with untruth things and that's that's probably the most difficult thing because the kids believe it and the parents believe it so but look we put ourselves in this situation and we got to fight our way out of it sam from an offensive standpoint how do you maybe get get that group revved back up again to where it resembles maybe what you looked like at, at florida after last year? well i mean there's a lot of things you know um We've got to play better out on the edge. We've got to play better at tackle. I mean, we have to. So um, we have to we have to make people miss. We obviously have to protect better. All those type things. Um, we've got to change something up. Obviously, we had a change there in Florida, which worked for us. We did a lot of similar things. Some changes on Saturday. They had a week to prepare for it, which was different because Florida did not. Uh, and so we have to continue. We're not a team that can just turn around and hand a ball off right now and just smash smash like Auburn did to us. We're, we're not there uh, right now like we've been uh, really for the most part all the other three years, especially uh, the last two. So we've got to continue to try to steal some yards and things of that nature and, and get some what I might call easy yards or space yards. But once we get out in space, we've got to make somebody miss too. And because uh, other people are making us miss, and uh, we've got to we've got to do something a little bit different so we can get some explosive plays. And defensively, that group had played so well for for so many weeks in a row. I wonder what the mindset is or what you've seen from that group. Do you think they can? I, I really don't well? know. I know they were fine in the locker room. Everybody was quiet. Everybody was listening uh, in, in the locker room. Uh, I'll know a little bit more to answer that question today. 
but they're a resilient group. I think they love their coaches. I think they respect their coaches, and and uh, we've got a lot we got to clean up. And but I think they will. I, I know they will because they they want to win too, and they're they're a, a really good group of kids. Sam, the the tackling issues that have kind of popped up here over the last two yeah. weeks is that something that's maybe more difficult to fix this late in the season when it pops up? Well. It wasn't a problem earlier, you know what I mean? So um, we're just not rapping. I mean, we're trying to body tackle everybody. And, uh, you know, our linebackers have to – we're free in the hole a lot of times and we're not making a play consistently like we do. Obviously, we, we've we talked about what we can do differently. You know, we had a tackling circuit. We've had, you know, all those things. Um, and I don't want to go live, you know, at practice. Um, but you can you can fix anything if you emphasize it, or you can I don't know if fix is the word. You can get better at it, and so we're going to continue to do that and see if we can't get better this week. I know this might be a frustrating question for you, but there was a video you know shared on social media yeah. about players watching a movie during halftime. I'm wondering, you know, what were your thoughts on the video? Did you see it? And kind of what were your thoughts on the you know, kind of the reaction from people when they what saw? What was it? the show? Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen Polar Express, but so I don't really know my thoughts on the movie. But, uh, you know, in our locker room, I want to reward our kids by letting them run through the A if they practice well. And so we don't have enough lockers in our main locker to um, house all the kids. So some of them have to go in a separate locker and uh, – it's separate and a separate door to the locker. And uh, and so um, uh, a young man, I've already addressed it with him. He made a mistake. Uh, that's why we don't, you know, you don't want uh, cameras in a locker room for several reasons, you know, because of your showering, your this, that, and the other. But it's hard because the music's on it as well. You know what I'm saying? So that's a team rule. You can't have your, uh, but the also as a team rule, you don't post anything you know, after Friday night, you know, after we, we leave on Friday. And uh, so the young man made a mistake, uh, sent it to a friend, friend sent it to his brother, brother put it out on what have you. And uh, I've already addressed it, and, and uh, I think we're fine there. But it was just a, a mistake that a young man made, and I wish he wouldn't have. But uh, he came in, he was sorry for it, he was uh, very remorseful for it, and so we're going to move on. So I was going to get some injury updates from you. Uh, Patrick Kudis, do you think he might be able to return this week? Well, I hope so. He's going to do a little bit today, um, which, you know, Dave said that today, and he's talking about, well, you know, he can do a little bit in Indy, you know. Well, he couldn't – he's in a boot last week, so he has progressed. Uh, we're going to be smart with him because a beat up him uh, is not better than what we have. Uh, but – uh, he has an opportunity. Braxton's got a, a sprain, a shoulder sprain. Uh, we're going to keep him out of contact all week, and we'll just see where that goes. But those are probably the only two that I can think of right now, unless you have somebody else on your mind. Was Rocket, I know he was shaking up at one no, point. He, he's he's fine. Uh, and, he'll be fine. And then Greer, I think, also came out. He's fine as well. Yeah. yeah. Singletary didn't dress out. Do you know what his status is? S Singletary, uh, he had – uh, an ankle that happened isn't it, it? It looked bad in practice, and stepped on a receiver's uh, foot. Uh, he he also is going to move around a little bit today in Indy. Uh, I think him and Kudus would be very very questionable for the game. Uh, well, along with Braxton, I think those three guys would be very questionable. But I think there is a chance. Hey, Coach, going off of uh, Bob's question a little bit earlier, you talked about your personal approach to kind of blocking out the noise. What's your method in terms of being the leader of the football team and communicating with the football team? What's your approach this week? Do you address all the rumors flying around, or is it the same kind of block out the noise approach with them? Well, we got a lot of fix, you know, so I'm going to go uh, today about what we did wrong and how we can fix it. Um, and, you know, our kids probably hear and read the same thing that the recruits do. I'm not going to address it because I don't think it's as severe as y'all do. But, uh, 
uh, if they ask me about it, then I'm, I'm going to explain, you know, about, about that. But I don't have time really to explain about my job security, to be honest with you. We've got to beat F- FIU, and, and, uh, uh, and that's an honest answer. And, and uh, so uh, if I was worried about me personally, I think it would take away from what we're trying to get done here. I got a job to do. I get paid to do it. I need to do a better job, and so I can't, I can't really sit around worried about my job security or me or anything like that. But I just think it's a much bigger issue with the media than it is with myself. Yeah, you said you know what's going on, and Hunter knows what's going on. So what's going on? Did you talk to him after the game? I talk to Hunter every week. You know, I talk to him after every single game. Um, talk to him some on Monday, Sundays, not not often, but some. On, well, yeah, on Sundays I talk to him on Mondays, and and uh, you'd have to ask him the conversation. But I haven't really expressed to you what our conversation was been over the four years, so I don't think today's a good time to talk about that either. We good. Well, you as a coordinator, you can only call certain plays now, and the people got to people got to block and execute it, and this that. Now, obviously, we thought it went well in practice and things of that nature. So, Kenny, we're still evaluating Kenny and those things. I'm not let one one game there where we didn't have any you know any success in in reality uh, change any of that, but. Um, um, it's not time really to make that decision to me, but but uh, I'm not disappointed in him by any stretch in the imagination. He's worked his tail off and and uh, came in here and done a re- he's done a really good job. Sam, I, I get there's no quarterback controversy, but with, with what Jacoby did the other day, do you think about maybe giving him a series uh, Saturday night? Or you know, we 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 have you know I hate it. I hate this. Hate's not a good word, but to come in here on a Monday and a- answer questions. Uh, and be truthful to you is hard because we haven't had any conversations with anybody on the team. You, you, you know what I mean? Like if if we were going to do something, and, and we're not, by the way, but Jacoby I think has earned the right to play, you know, some. But to answer a question truthfully when I haven't had the opportunity to tell a kid before I tell the media, it's that's why Mondays a lot of times – if we ever start practicing in the morning, I think these will be a lot better, you know, interviews. You know what I mean? But uh, I, I, like I said before, Bob, I think he really gave us a spark. And man, he looked fast. And you know, he's played two games, so two, two touchdowns, you know, in both games. And and uh, I'm really excited about him and our future. Uh, but I think he's earned the right to get on the field. I can ask you again Wednesday. <laughs> And, and Bax, you know, I think he had a couple catches. I know he's not Hunter Henry, but you know, you've obviously had injuries there. What would you think of what he gave you? And maybe he, can he give you a little bit more than people might might think? Well, I hope so. You know, I, I think Bax is reliable. You know exactly what he's going to give you. And uh, and he's been uh, wonderful to have on the football team and made a couple nice – ran up the sideline, made a nice run on one of his catches. And, and uh, so we just – you know, he, we only have him for two more games, so we we got to we got to rev him up a little bit and see what he can do. Uh, but I was proud of of his effort uh, on Saturday. Coach, I'm sorry to ask another question about the Polar Express thing, but is it normal for them to be watching something on the TV during games? Well, it was halftime, so the game wasn't it wasn't during the game, but uh, no. You probably knew the answer to that. Well, I did. I figured so. I'm going to ask you, do you think it's normal for them to No, not at all. Look, I'll be honest with you. I didn't even know there was a TV in there. And uh, somehow the TV got turned on. I don't think – I'll be perfectly honest with you. I don't think that him being in the red shirt locker room watching a movie at halftime had anything to do with us getting our butt kicked. Um, and then 
Isaiah Satania, it seems like it was one of the first times we've seen him catch a ball down the field like he, like he did on Saturday. Is that something maybe we could see more moving forward from him? Well, I hope so. You know, we obviously have run running routes where he, he is running deep over the middle of the field. And, and um, he happened to get open that time, and, and he threw it to him. But uh, we always have somebody down the middle of the field to throw it to. Um, we also have some other guys that are fast on the team. Uh, but he made a nice catch on that one. And obviously, if we can get it more often, we sure would like to do that. Hey, uh, developing players in the age of NIL and modern football, um, is it harder to feel like you're developing the younger guys because there's so much out there? How do you think about I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. You're saying, where's your mind go? Your mind go, okay, we're going to stay with this. Is this what you're asking? Or, 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 or are we going to stay with this kid? Or are we going to go try to out-recruit him? Are we going to develop on him, wait wait for him in the spring? Right? I mean, those are questions you ask all every all the time, you know. Um, and that's a good question. I, You know, I think it's on the individual base, you know, of who it may be and all that. And then it depends on the group, to be honest with you, Tom. I mean, if you've got to rehaul a group, then you probably are thinking JC, Portal, you know what I mean, something to immediately. And then what you're doing when you do that, you're just saying, hey, you can develop and maybe you'll be ready after spring ball. If you're not, we can win some games and then give you another, give you fall, give you another six months, weight room, all that stuff to develop. So I think you you ask that question individually and then I think you ask it as a group. And uh, uh, those are hard, hard because uh, you want to be as loyal as you possibly can to the guys on your team. But obviously we're in the win business and we and we need to win as well. You mentioned JUCO there. I'm wondering, have you noticed a like a trickle down effect with with more talented like kids that don't have the opportunity to go sign with a D1 school just because of the portal and everything, where there's more talent at the junior college level now? Maybe, or have you noticed any kind of difference there with the? Not, well, what I've noticed in junior college is they're not being as highly recruited as what they used to be, and it's simply nor is high school. It's simply because. You saw a guy play against Syracuse on tape and he looked really good, or you saw a guy play against Ole Miss on tape and he looked good and you're going, okay, I want that guy because of what you see of who his competition is. I think that's probably where, you know, I'm familiar with the, with the Kansas Junior Colleges because I was a head coach over there. So I know, I know a little bit more about who they're playing and the competition than maybe somebody who is not quite as familiar. Uh, but I think it's it's uh, trickled down to junior college as well. I, I I just don't think it's as highly recruited as what it had been in the past. I know I know we spoke about maybe the surprise of how poorly the first quarter went on Auburn when we spoke Saturday. But I'm just wondering if maybe it was a little extra sting because of the optimism coming out of the Florida game. Did you sense like maybe like and the good week of practice and everything, like it caught you guys off guard and that stung a little bit more? I don't know. I mean, momentum's a wild thing now. I mean, when you lose it, it's hard to get back. And, and you guys asked me a lot of questions about that on fourth and ones or faking kicks or whatever. You know what I mean, whatever it may be. And you're always thinking about it. what if you lose a moment. We just never had. They took the opening kickoff. They went and scored. We got us punt. Boom, got back to score. And we kept talking about, hey, we can get back in there, get back in this. Nudie gave us. We were down 21 nothing, but Nudie gave us a chance to maybe get some of the get it, maybe not get momentum, but get it stopped. And we go three plays, two yards, and kick a field goal. Uh, so. You're constantly trying to do that. I don't know if if um, the Florida game went negative towards this one or, you know, I don't know. You always want your team to feel good. If you're holding them accountable, you want them to feel good, you know, which they did, you know, last week. Um, so if I had to answer that, and probably any coach had to answer that, we, you know, that would never happen. Um, but I don't know. That's a good question. I really don't have a great answer for you uh, to that question. Coach, appreciate it. All right, guys.